Hello and welcome to Tuesday's training. Because it's Tuesday, we're inside the training. It's insider trading, training. <laughs> anyway, um, we're talking today about teaching your horse to stop. A lot of people tell me that their horse does everything beautifully, but it doesn't stop. And um, there's nothing more scary than a horse that won't stop. I think stopping is the most important thing that you have to have before you get on your horse because Really, you know, if your horse misses a flying change, for example, that's really not a big problem. But if your horse fails to stop, it can be an enormous problem. So I've also heard that people teach one rein stops and people suggest that you know how to do a one rein stop in case you get yourself into a situation where you can't stop your horse and you should do a one rein stop. Um, that, you know, would be in an extreme emergency because I think the horse is also very likely to fall over and land on you doing a one rein stop. They're very dangerous things. If, um, you know, anyone suggests that you ride a horse that might require a one rein stop, I would stay well away from it because I think it's a very bad sign. Um, also, one rein stops make you bend the horse's head right around to the side, which is another really uncomfortable thing to do for the horse. You know, you see a lot of this um, with trainers bending their horses so their noses touch their their knees and things. And if you've ever done that, you know, just do it for five minutes yourself and reach your ear down to your shoulder. Just do that one side and then the other. And it really is quite uncomfortable. And the horse must feel the same way because yes, a horse can reach back there and get a fly off its back. But the horse doesn't spend all day reaching around to its side like that. And every time you do that, bend the horse around to the left, for example, all those muscles on the right-hand side of the neck are way stretched out. And that's very uncomfortable for the horse. So one round stops generally is a very bad idea. I'd, I'd keep away from it. Um, two rein stops, if you have the, if you're on the horse um, and the horse isn't stopping well, do a two rein stop, but slightly bend the horse's neck to one side or the other. So not so that its nose is outside the point of his shoulder, but just enough to slightly offset the head. And what that does is it means you're only really working the head and the neck of the horse, and the horse can't brace against you, which is the important thing, because what happens when you can't stop the horse is that it's bracing against you and it's using its whole skeletal system to do that. And that becomes very, very difficult and very dangerous very quickly. But simply by offsetting its head a bit, so bending its neck a little bit, then you're only working the neck and that's a much easier place to be. So with everything we teach, I try and teach it from the ground, of course, first. And so stops is no different. And I try and teach everything from one rein and then the other rein. The horse has two sides, he's got to learn it equally on both sides. So if you navigate you know, through from your library down to the horse training course into courses, you'll find on the second page of your courses, there's one devoted to stops. You'll see that I haven't joined stops and backup together because they're two very different things. And we want to really establish a good stop and walk forward before we teach backup because backup can lead to other problems and I don't teach backup until the horse has a very well established walk trot canter and a halt so and we'll discuss that in another session but let's just look at the pattern we're going to use to teach these stops so the second video here talks about the pattern and um, there's obviously you know there's training notes we and you'll see in here that you can um, see all the lesson steps. But we'll just have a look at the video while we're here. And I'm hoping you're not going to get any sound. Okay, so I've got the worst internet connection out here, plus the Telstra Tower is down or something dire. Anyway, this is young Tally when he was um, quite young. He's just starting under saddle, I think. He's, um, he's probably three and a half. And what are we going to do? As with everything we teach, we're going to have a pattern. So we're going to have a spot on the horse we want to move. And today it's going to be, because I'm on his left-hand side, it's going to be Tally's left front foot. The direction, I want it to swivel around. I want it to stop going forward. Okay. But I'm not going to look at the rest of his feet. I only want one spot. 
So the spot is the front foot. The direction is to stop or to swivel around. You just saw it swiveling around there. The motivator is rain pressure. So I'm going to put rain pressure on until he stops with, uh, moving his foot forward. And the reward is to release that rain pressure and to praise him. So I also need, because I want to develop a really light horse, it does not require rain pressure to stop. This is his first lesson, so this is him just learning the lesson. What I want to do is I want to have three cues. So it's always good if you can have three cues. So here on the ground, I'm going to um, first of all say, whoa, and then I'm going to stop walking, and then I'm going to pick up pressure. They come quite fast one after the other, so I'm not going to you know, give him three seconds between the cues or anything because I want him to connect them. But I also want to keep him engaged enough so that he's busy and he's thinking. But first I'll say, whoa, then I'll stop walking, and then I'll pick up pressure. And I'll release it as soon as that left front stops. What Tally's going to do is right there. He's going to disengage his hindquarters. You see how his hindquarters move around? When he stops, he's not stopping all his feet. He's only stopping one foot. Right there, there. See that, that foot stopped quite quickly, but the hindquarters kept going. And that's absolutely what I want. That's perfect. Because Tully knows that his hindquarters in his engine. It's hard for him to do those disengagement steps. They're difficult to do, and you don't want to be practicing that a lot. Um, it's not something you'll notice. It's not something horses do in the paddock. I see a lot of people on the ground with their horses asking the horse to change direction. And they change direction by moving the hindquarters around the forequarters. And that's not the way horses change direction in the paddock. Horses change direction in the paddock by moving their shoulders. Um, and so if you, do, if you practice that disengagement too much, they actually get quite sore in the hindquarters. So it's not a great idea. So what I'm doing now is what I want him to do is really associate that cue with just that left front foot. So I've started to put him on the fence here, and this video is nearly done. And the fence helps me because he can't move his hindquarters too much to the right because the fence is stopping that happening. So he's going to find it easier to work out where his release is coming from. We'll just go down to the next video. Um, if I can stop his hindquarters moving, the lesson will be clearer and therefore faster for him. So let's see how he gets on. This is just a little bit afterwards, but we've got some more. This will tell you how to, um, how to stop those hindquarters moving when it loads up. Thank you, thank you, Baffle Creek um, Reception. So with our pattern, what we have to work out is what the horse doesn't want. What the horse doesn't want is pressure in its mouth. So we make that the last thing. What we're trying to do is teach the horse the pattern. So the pattern is going to be, whoa, I stop walking, and then pressure. And so the horse will learn that that pressure is coming and he'll stop when he hears the word whoa because he doesn't want the pressure. And that's the really good thing about patterns is that horses are so good at learning patterns. So as long as we put the cue, the easy cue, the soft cue, the non-pressure cue um, first, that's what we'll end up with. So we'll end up with a horse that stops when you say whoa. Now, my middle cue here is to stop walking. Of course, I can't do that when I'm in the saddle. So in the saddle, it will require a bit of retraining So, because I've got to swap that middle cue out for something else. And what I'll swap it out for is sitting back a little bit. I tend to sit back a little bit and put my legs forward, but that's just me. Your cue can be whatever you want it to be. So in the saddle, I'll use one rein again. I'll say, whoa, and then I'll sit back a bit and then I'll pick up pressure. So the pattern is really predictable and we become very, very predictable. And that's what horses like, it's what they understand. If I'm just galloping along and I pick up pressure in his mouth, he's gonna throw his head in the air and he's not going to understand it and he's not going to like it. Um, and we're gonna end up with a very anxious horse because they don't like to be surprised. 
So that is basic stops for you. Um, and of course, you know, it's a good thing to teach very early because we, the horse has to stop. So let's say you're teaching something like give to the bit and you're changing sides a lot because you don't want the horse's neck to get sore. So teach the horse to stop properly when you're teaching give to the bit. So you stop and then you change sides. And it's an absolutely perfect time to teach it and really good because you're getting two two lessons for the price and the time of one. So it really is an excellent use of your time. Anyway, thank you. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you got something out of it. And I will see you tomorrow with, what is it? Wednesday, hump day. Haha, -ha, my favorite. Bye.